Sneaky preview then that Yuka is on set with us now with the business news. We're starting up with Yuka with the latest on the Boeing 737 MAX jets uh, scandal, if that's the word. I mean, they're set to remain on the ground for now, aren't they? That's right. Um, well, Stuart Boeing says it supports the idea of suspending its 737 MAXs uh, around the world. And this after more than 40 countries, including the United States, grounded flights using the model. There are 371 of this model currently in service globally. Last Sunday's Ethiopian Airlines crash was a second fatal accident involving the newest version of Boeing's bestseller. And investigators say the two flights took very similar paths. Alison Sargent has the latest. Flights cancelled across the U.S. after the president announced the grounding of all Boeing 737 MAX flights. Despite the inconvenience, it's a decision many passengers wish had come sooner. Even if not all of them are convinced, there's a real risk. It probably would have been nice if he had done it a day or so before, when, like once the UK had grounded similar planes, but I'm glad he did it now. There's so many that have been operational that I'm not sure it's really as big of an issue as some people are making it sound like it is. The global grounding of the 737 MAX is a big issue for Boeing as it looks to compete with its rival Airbus. Boeing is the top U.S. exporter by sales and employs over 150,000 people worldwide. Analysts estimate that updating the software on the planes alone could cost between one and two million dollars a jet. Meanwhile, the company is working on orders for around 4,600 more planes. If orders are canceled or stalled, the impact could be felt around the world because the U.S. plane maker gets its parts from global suppliers like its Michelin tires and its security system, which is designed by this agency near Bordeaux. We're anxious to see what decisions get made by Boeing and by the airlines, who are also our clients. We'll be in trouble if there's a real problem with this model in the coming months or years. Boeing says it continues to have full confidence in its plane safety. But the company's CEO said that he supported grounding the 737 MAX as a proactive step out of an abundance of caution. And reporting there. Moving on, factory output in China slowed further in the first two months of this year, while unemployment rose, according to the latest official data. The figures from the National Bureau of Statistics out on Thursday showed that China's industrial output growth slowed to 5.3 percent year on year, the lowest level in 17 years. Unemployment rose to 5.3 percent. The auto market also took a hit from the ongoing trade battle with the United States, sales plunging more than 17 percent in January and February from a year earlier. Now with that, let's take a look at global stock markets. Uh, here in Europe, um, see if we can get the figures. Here in Europe, it appears that the markets opened. Uh, it was a mixed picture at the open uh, with London's FTSE uh, opening flat on the flat line and Paris's CAC 40 uh, just rising above by about a fifth of a percentage point. Earlier in Asia, that week, Chinese data pushed Shanghai shares lower, as you can see, down 1.2%. Tokyo's Nikkei also closing uh, below the flat line. In the currency markets, the British pound surged after MPs rejected a no-deal scenario under any circumstances, but has eased its gains as uncertainty kicked in. It's, current, it's currently trading uh, at minus a fifth of a percentage point against the US dollar and even further against uh, the euro, down 0.23%. Uh, now, it's been a roller coaster ride for the British pound this week. It took a dive on Tuesday just before MPs voted down Theresa May's deal, following legal advice which suggested that the agreement could lead to the UK remaining tied to the European Union indefinitely. On Wednesday, it rose again as MPs rejected a no deal Brexit. Earlier, I spoke with Jamil Ahmad, Global Head of Currency Strategy and Market Research at FXTM, and asked him whether this volatility was likely to continue. Volatility will continue because there's clearly no end to this uncertainty. It's just so much is unclear. It's been unclear since the June 2016 vote. It's unclear today. It was unclear yesterday, a month ago, and it will remain unclear tomorrow. As it stands, the default scenario is that the United Kingdom will be leaving the European Union on March 29. Even if the MPs vote today in order to request the extension, 
There is no guarantee or obligation from the European Union side to grant it. So this is why the markets will remain volatile. The British pound is having swings ups and down, and we don't quite know what will happen yet, which is why I would say investors should stay on guard and prepare for some profit taken on the British pound, because a lot of optimism has been priced in over the past week or so. And finally, from business, Facebook is suffering technical difficulties after it was hit by some of the longest outages on its platforms. On Wednesday, some users around the world had trouble accessing the Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram apps for up to 10 hours. Users in parts of the United States, Japan and Europe were affected by the outage, according to a website which gives information about service interruptions in big global tech firms. It's not clear what has caused the disruptions and Facebook says it's investigating the overall impact, including possible refunds to advise advertisers. And that's it for business for now. Thanks very much, Yoko. I wonder how many fewer likes there were. Yoko, with the business.